Hello everyone, this is Thomas, N1SPY, and today I have a very important goal for this project. I'm going to help explain how radio really works, and to get in depth with that, I'm going to create my own radio from scratch. So before we get started, I have some brief history. When people first found out they could transmit electromagnetic waves through a conductor, they were very excited because when you put electromagnetic waves through a conductor, they not only go up and down the conductor, they are transmitted out into the air. And that's how the antenna was born. And then later on, people realized that when you shape the antenna a different way, or when you change its length, it's so much easier to transmit signals and it's a lot more efficient. Later on, people figured out that by turning transmissions on and off, they were able to send messages. It's kind of like flashing a flashlight, except radio waves can travel a lot farther. One popular format of this would obviously be Morse code. So think of it this way, we have a thousand signals um, from different transmitters around the world on all different frequencies and our conductor picks all of these signals up and obviously this conductor is our receiving antenna and our radio also helps to just discern from one of these signals and they're all running through the antenna up and down and up and down. The radio frequencies are kind of like thousands and thousands of people in a busy train station, so many voices, all of different pitches, all closer, all weaker, stronger, and our radio has to find a way to just pick out one of these voices. Let's see how it can do that. So the starting point of our radio is the antenna. Then next, there's a capacitor. A capacitor is basically two, two conductors with um, some sort of filament inside, and when electricity builds up on one side, it flows, once enough builds up, it flows to the other side. And this happens, of course, thousands or millions or billions of times a second. And one example of this capacitor is right here. This one can be set to a certain frequency, and that frequency can correlate to the frequency you want to receive so then you can just pick out one signal that's able that you are able to put through the speaker and be able to hear so all radios mostly use amplitude modulation that right there is an unmodulated signal as you can see the amplitude is all even but then right here is an amplitude modulated signal where the modulation has changed the amplitude to be smaller and higher in some places and that's how they are able to code music or speech into certain radio signals. After we put our radio signal through the capacitor, it then goes on to our demodulator. The heart of this demodulator is a diode, which takes only the top half of our radio signal. And once it does that, it's able to be sent to a speaker or an amplifier. And um, our demodulator used to be called a detector back when radio signals were used by switching on and off a switch, like Morse code. But now, since we have different types of modulations for our radio signals, it's mostly used as a demodulator, which is why it's called as a modulator now. After we put our signal through the demodulator, it's ready to go through an amplifier. The heart of this amplifier is a transistor. A transistor takes a very strong, constant signal, and then it combines that signal with our very, very weak modulated signal that we have received with our antenna, and it's gone through the rest of the radio, and then it combines those two signals to make a strong and modulated signal. Finally, after our signal goes through our amplifier, we're ready to put it through a speaker. This speaker takes our electromagnetic wave, which is now strong and modulated, and it turns it into sound waves, which we can hear through our ears. So, without further ado, let's get started with uh, building our radio, and let's see how it works out.
So I'm getting started here. First thing we have to do is put in the resistors. And to put in the resistors, you have to know what their designation is. And the designation is how much resistance they have. And you can tell this by looking at the four little, little stripes on them. And that over there is just a chart I'll be using to know how much. So for the first band is red, the second is also red, the third is yellow, and the fourth is gold, and knowing those, you can find about how much resistance they have and put them in the correct hole that they belong in. So all the resistors are in place. One interesting thing about them is that they don't have polarity, so as long as you put them in and they have good connection, you're good to go. And I uh, have double checked my color coding, um, and also with the instruction booklet, so we are able to know that they are in the exact place and are good to go. So since my resistors are done, I am ready to start putting in these capacitors. These capacitors do not have polarity, and they're basically just two conductors with a non-conductor in the middle. And basically when enough electricity builds up in one of the conductors, then it jumps through a non-conductor into, into the other conductor. And we are going to use these and we're just going to put them in. And another thing is you can see that there is a circuit diagram here. That there, the squiggly line here, is a resistor. And this is just a normal type capacitor. So now it's time to insert this capacitor, which we have found to be labeled 103. We are going to put it right between terminals 11 and 12 into the detector. So here I need to mount in some of these electrolytic capacitors, the blue one here. And the problem about them is that they have polarity and you can tell the longer side is positive and the shorter side is negative so I have to be really careful when plugging them in and they have specific sides that they must be put in. What I have in my hand here is a transistor. I need two of them to put into our radio and what a transistor is it takes a weak signal and it amplifies it. How it does this is it takes a strong always constant strong signal which isn't um, it isn't modulated but then it takes a weak modulated signal and then what comes out is a modulated strong modulated signal and you can see that the transistor has three leads from left to right they are the emitter the collector and the base and most of the technological adv advancements that have happened in the past 50 or 60 years are because of the invention of the transistor. It's a very powerful electronic, and now we have the pleasure of going ahead and putting it in our radio. So before I proceed in building our radio, I just wanted to go over the parts of a radio, and the first part is the antenna and tuner. The antenna receives any signal, and those signals, think of them as like a thousand voices in a small building, and then the tuner can tune to just one of them. Then the signal the tuner is receiving goes straight to the detector, and the detector is able to change the electromagnetic wave, which comes from the antenna, which is what the antenna is receiving, and it's able to change it into an audio signal. Then the, t the, then the detector pushes that audio signal through a preamplifier and an amplifier, which, as the name suggests, amplifies the signal so that it's able to then go through a speaker. As you can see, I have put in our AM antenna, and next to put in is our AM tuner capacitor, which will help us isolate one signal. So as you can see, everything is pretty much set and done, and you can see that I have added our tuner and on-off switch, 
and I have also added um, a part of the amplifier here. And then um, one thing is that we now we have to add some batteries. And it looks kind of like a jungle, but at least everything's very organized. And since it's organized, it's actually fairly easy to understand. And because it's easy to understand, it's a great learning experience. So we're just going to go ahead and get some batteries, put them in, and see if it works. So, our radio is just about ready to turn on, but there's one last thing I wanted to say. These principles that I have just explained allow us to hear our local FM and AM stations, but they can also allow us to hear very, very distant radio signals, like those sent from Voyager, which is past Pluto, about six light hours away. So, that's a very, very long distance, yet we're still able to hear them using pretty much the same exact stuff that we're using here to build a radio. So I'm just about to flip the switch. Let's actually do that right now. And we are right now tuned onto the AM band. So I'm going to try and look for a signal. There's one there, but it's a little weak. You can kind of make out the music. It's sending some music and it's coming out from the speaker. And um, this this radio wave goes through the entirety of our radio, it comes out from the antenna into the tuning capacitor, into our detector, then straight into the preamplifier, then into the amplifier, then it finally goes into the speaker. So in one of my previous projects, I used this antenna here. It's a loop antenna with a variable capacitor. And if you want to learn more about it, check the other video. So this antenna is actually able to couple with our tiny little antenna here. So I'm going to tune it a little bit so that we can amplify this signal. Wow, that's a pretty big difference, isn't it? So either way, uh, thank you so much for listening and thank you so much for helping me build our radio and I hope you learned a lot as much as I did so anyway 73 from Thomas and I am always open to questions